all over the world, heroes are awakening from their stasis. In New Jersey, the champions save the innocents drowning in the rising tide. Viv Vision explains that it is as if they suddenly awoke from a sleeping dream into pandemonium. They have found themselves in the epicenter of a volcano and an earthquake. With only her, Kamala Khan, and Miles Morales in attendance, Viv makes a call to the other members of the team. Currently, Nova, Sam Alexander, and the Hulk, Amadeus Cho, are pulling a bus full of people out of a small town being consumed by fire. Sam tells Viv that they should have never split the team. Half of Texas is going up in flames. He and the Hulk are saving as many people as they can, but something's dribbling the planet like a basketball. And it's just getting worse everywhere. This is 10 Michael Bay movies at once, Sam explains. Crazy weather, earthquakes where there shouldn't be any. People need rescuing everywhere, and we just can't keep up. In Hell's Kitchen, Daredevil and Iron Fist evacuate civilians out of crumbling buildings. In Los Angeles, America Chavez rushes to save people caught in the burning forests. In Nevada, Spider-Man webs a bus tumbling off a broken bridge. And back in Long Island, even Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur cannot ignore the call to be a hero. In the Grandmaster's cosmic game room, lightning falls to the floor, depleted. With this power being channeled through the mighty hammer Mjolnir, they were successfully able to restart the world engine. He has never felt so drained. Part of him still can't believe he is here, doing his bit to save Earth. Now, it is up to Hercules and Sunspot to keep the wheel turning. Roberto tells the others that failure is not an option. I, Hercules agrees, for tis a day unlike any other when mortals rise and do the work of gods. Thor approaches the two men and grabs onto the wheel, asking what kind of god would she be if she didn't help as well. Tony Ho goes to pick up Miguel when the two hear a crackling sound behind them. They turn to find the Grand Master reconstructing himself, saying, The Avengers fight to save their fragile planet once again. Why am I not surprised? The Grand Master becomes fully formed and begins walking away. Miguel, go after him! Tony elbows Miguel on his side. Gr Grandmaster, wait! Miguel struggles to stand to his feet and begins to follow the elder. You can't just abandon all those people down there. Grandmaster slows his pace in order to tell Lightning. Feeble organisms destroyed by an unfeeling universe. Listen well, human. All that mattered was the game and the game is now lost. In Manhattan, the Avengers begin to attack the Challenger in waves. Both Cannonball and Rogue fly in for the first attack. Pitiable to think that out of all the magnificent combat fields in the galaxy, my opponent chose this fragile silicon sphere. Both Rogue and Cannonball collide but, even with the added force of Cannonball's invulnerability field, the attack is barely able to knock the Challenger off his feet. Next, Falcon commands the Red Squad to attack. Falcon, Beast, Squirrel Girl, Voodoo, and Wonder Man all converge on the Elder of the Universe, but each of them are easily dispatched with a single volley from his crimson cosmic energy. Next, 
Captain America follows up with his strike. Blue Squad, go! Synapse, probe his mind! Wanda, try for his nervous system! The Challenger sees them approach, and they too are pushed back with a single blast of energy. I have gazed upon your world and seen vast armies, nuclear arsenals, weapons that could eliminate entire alien races. This is Earth's best defense, a colorful handful of native warriors. Next, Rogue tries to strike again, this time with Wasp and Hawkeye as her backup, dubbed as the Grey Squad. Their wave does just as well as the last. Across the street, Voyager and Nadia Pym, the all-new Wasp, huddle behind a small newsstand. Nadia suggests that Voyager attempt to teleport the Challenger into the sun. Valerie states that she has never attempted anything like that before, but she will try. At that moment, Voyager is hit with a blast in her blind spot and screams out in pain. You! The Challenger approaches and lifts Voyager by her neck. Daddy's little spoiler. Think about how much of this is your fault. How much time and energy you have cost me these last few days. Who do you think you are? Falcon, Beast, and Voodoo all fly in for an attack to stop the Challenger. Falcon saying, right now, she's one of us. All squads, magicians to the back, power hitters to the front, now. Elsewhere, Janet Van Dyne throws Clint a couple of shrunken arrows. Hawkeye, I'm giving you your Christmas present early, catch. The arrows grow to normal size in midair and Hawkeye grabs them both. You made these? What do they do? Have you ever seen nano acids crawl their way through a bad guy's skin? No. Then savor the moment. In the halls of the cosmic game room, lightning continues to follow the grandmaster. So, you're just going to leave? Indeed. I'll take a few trophies and then spirit myself away until my opponent has cooled down. He is quite the sore winner, it seems. Lightning stops in his tracks when he sees Johnny Storm and Red Wolf floating in crystals. Hawkeye was right. They are alive. Th those are, Lightning begins, points scored. No longer important, Grandmaster continues to walk through the game room, wondering aloud. Perhaps, in a few centuries, I'll approach him for a rematch. Grandmaster produces a small hologram in his hand to examine the whereabouts of his daughter Voyager. Ah, my Vani! You debase yourself by fighting alongside the humans when there is nothing left to be gained, to be won. Such a waste. Your daughter? Yes. Don't you even care about her? No. Lightning racks his brain for even the smallest idea of how to get Human Torch and Red Wolf out of their prisons. In his current state, Miguel is no match for an elder. But, what did Wonder Man always say? It's not what you can do. Miguel pulls out a stack of playing cards and calls the Grandmaster one last time, saying, The game is poker. Hold them. No limit. You in? On Earth, Challenger continues his onslaught. Amongst the fallen Avengers, Wonder Man rises. He floats into the air, charging his ionic energy, and tells the Elder, That's enough, Challenger. If you've got a legitimate grievance, I'm willing to talk. But if all you are is a bully who likes hurting people, you'll have to start with me. 
Challenger scowls, but admits what Wonder Man says does sound reasonable. So, it's a deal. Challenger sends out a pair of optic blasts that not only hit Wonder Man, but begin to de-atomize him from the inside out. He screams out in pain, causing Voodoo and Beast to jump into action. Voodoo casts a spell that catches and keeps Wonder Man in stasis. This will, at the very least, keep Simon's energy form stable for the moment being. Janet Van Dyne swoops by and summons Nadia for a joint sneak attack. Challenger continues to muse. Madness, the strongest of you all. And he wanted to talk to me. This is a planet of gnats. Both wasps approach and Janet corrects Challenger, stating that this is what makes Simon the strongest. And soon, he will regret not taking Simon's offer. Nadia chimes in too, adding, And, for the record, we are not gnats. We are wasps, and this is our sting. Both heroes use their patented sting on each of the challenger's eyes, momentarily blinding him and opening him up for another attack. In the game room, Miguel and the Grandmaster sit down for the final game. All cards are now dealt. A king, two queens, a ten, a two. Three cards in the same suit. It's a very potent hand, Miguel. Of course, it all depends on what you can make with the two cards you're holding. I know the rules, and we gasped. Then I'll remind you of the stakes. The human torch's freedom against your own. Will you check or bet? I bet. Not just my freedom, my life. But if I win, you give me Red Wolf. Acceptable. I raise your planet back where it belongs if you win. Or if I win, when I win, I'll take your Earth and everyone on it. Seven billion trophies. And oh, the games I will play. The battle continues. Synapse attempts to pry into the Elder's mind, but her efforts remain fruitless. He knows! He knows I'm trying to attack his mind, but he's blocking me! Squirrel Girl rushes over to aid the Inhuman Hero and advises, So, take a back door, Synapse! Falcon, use your power on him! Falcon flies by and immediately asks, What? He's not a bird, Squirrel Girl! He's an alien. Maybe he's evolved from birds or dinosaurs. Common ancestors. You don't know until you try. Falcon lands on a nearby building. Fine, I'll, I'll reach out. Try to see what he sees. But this isn't going to... I'll be damned. It's foggy. Distorted. It hurts, but I can see it. Told you, boasts Squirrel Girl. Synapse, use the connection. Go through Falcon's mind. Already there, Synapse tells her, and I found his pain centers. Synapse attacks every one of the challenger's pain centers at once, shattering his mind and causing him to bellow out in agony. Squirrel Girl retreats into herself, almost ashamed at how her plan unfolded. Um, okay, I mean... I was going to suggest having a conversation. At that moment, Rogue and Cannonball come in for a second combination attack. Rogue tells the rest of them not to pull their punches. This may be their only opportunity. Squirrel Girl obeys the order, but only if the others agree that after the fight is over, they are going to rehabilitate this guy.
The heroes each take their turn attacking the elder until he is knocked to the ground. E. Enough! You have succeeded in irritating me. The challenger once again rises to his feet and with an explosion of energy clears the surrounding area of each of the Avengers, sends cars and trucks flying off the ground and brings buildings crumbling to the floor around him. Well, Lightning, will you fold? The Grandmaster asks, staring only at the two kings he holds in his hand. Miguel attempts to keep his composure and his eyes on his own cards. He is a long way from hustling car thieves now. The Grandmaster is the most dangerous player in the universe. But Miguel has one thing going for him, his whole card. The one thing the Grandmaster doesn't know. Will you leave your planet, your friends, to the mercy of the elders? Because call or fold, it really doesn't matter. Either way, Endwegast will win it all. Miguel locks eyes with the elder, and coolly says, I raise. What? How? You bet your life, your planet. What else do you even have? My history. Your daughter alters memories. I bet you can too. So, if you win, I'm forgotten. Every bit of good I ever did, every life I ever saved, every victory erased. If anyone remembers me, let it be as a nobody, a D-list failure, a loser. The Grandmaster looks back at the two cards in his hand. Surely, two kings Creating a full house of three kings and two queens cannot be beat. But if... If you won, then... I would have to pay the same. A loser. And there it is. Miguel's whole card. The thing Grandmaster doesn't know. That what Miguel is betting here, the massive rays he just made, bigger than a planet, is nothing. This isn't about being the winner. It's not for glory. They don't care if they are remembered because it doesn't matter if anyone knows what good you did, as long as the good was done. That's what being an Avenger is. That's what the Grandmaster will never know. Well? Miguel asks, awaiting the Grandmaster's final decision. I... I... I fold. He concedes as he throws down his cards. Fine. You owe me two Avengers and an Earth. Now. Miguel leans forward to pick up the scattered cards and returns them to his deck. I had a full house, King's High. At least, at least tell me what I lost to. Did you have the better hand? Were you bluffing? I have to know. I have to know how you won. Both Human Torch and Red Wolf are removed from their stasis. Once Miguel sees that they're safe, he turns back to Grandmaster and says, Oh, honey. I don't play. On Earth, all the Avengers on the battlefield attack at once. Rogue, Beast, Cannonball, Hawkeye, Synapse, Scarlet Witch, Voodoo, Falcon, Squirrel Girl, and the Wasps continue to bombard the Challenger. Wave after wave, they continue to attack and they will not stop until their enemy falls. Captain America orders them. Hold the line! He's weakening! We can do this! Voyager watches from afar. Within her, 
she knows the captain is wrong. The Avengers are going to lose. Their power is finite and they're running out of time. The Challenger is an elder. His energy is nearly limitless. They're losing ground before they lose it all. Humans are legendary throughout the galaxy for their fighting spirit, but it's failing them. Beast arrives to shake Voyager out of her days, yelling, then it's time to rally the team, Voyager. You control memories, right? Make them remember. Remember what it means to be an Avenger. Voyager does just that. She taps into her cosmic level power and reaches into the memory of every hero present and forces them to remember every heroic moment they ever faced, every life saved, every battle fought. She forces them to remember what it means to be an Avenger. They are heroes. They fight for mankind. They give their all and then double it. They look death in the eye and tell it no. No retreat. No surrender. The words echo in each Avenger's ear and their fighting spirit is restored. Each hero is now back on their feet and preparing for the next attack. Scarlet energy begins to encircle each Avenger as they feel their power being renewed. The heroes look up to see the Scarlet Witch levitating in the air. By earth and sky, by craft and hex, by the past and the future, she calls hope forth from the darkness. She speaks the words of power, the words they gave power to, the words they made into magic. Let the words power augment their own to strike one blow from their hearts and souls, from all that they are. Let the call go forth. Avengers, assemble! Scarlet Witch's Hex multiplies the hero's power tenfold and their combined attack brings the challenger down. He falls to the ground and lays there, unconscious, amidst the havoc he caused. Not long after, the team of Avengers from the Cosmic Game Room arrive. The Earth then reappears in orbit, right in front of Captain Marvel and the Alpha Flight Space Station. All around the world, the weather begins to return to normal. Civilians begin to come out of hiding and cheer. The Avengers don't do this to be remembered. They do it for their friends, for those who believed in them. Sometimes they do it for their better selves, for the people they want to become one day, for everybody. Most of all, they fight for those who can't fight alongside to give them just a little hope, to let them know they're not alone. The heroes will stand with them, together, from the most loved to the most feared. They will stand with them, and they don't do it to be remembered, but sometimes just sometimes, they know they'll remember it forever. <laughs>